everybody it's christian buckley doing another mvp buzz chat and i'm talking today with nicholas hello hello thanks for inviting me it's great to have you it's always exciting to talk to brand new like a week ago week and a half ago brand new mvps so nicholas for folks that don't know you who are you where are you and what do you do so who am i so i'm nicholas chang i'm currently uh uh, a senior platform engineer from my IT uh, consulting company based in Belfast in England. And we provide services to different like public sector, private sector. And I'm recently awarded my Microsoft Azure MVP. Last Azure Tuesday. MVP. Yeah. Look, there's a lot. I think the last, I think uh, the last three people I've interviewed are all Azure MVPs. <laughs> but we'll dig into that. Uh, you know, it's always yeah. interesting to find out like what you focus on. But let me ask you first, because what was your path to becoming an MVP? Like, how did you hear about the program? When did you kind of start down that path? I don't really have that much path. I just pretty much help the community. This just pretty much like, uh, so I always very shy at presenting, uh, speaking, and those things. And I so my one of my friend in the community pushed me to like do more community events and I started speaking and started blogging and started like interviewing like in podcasts like yourself mm -hmm. and then uh, recently I've started going to conferences so I've been two conferences I've been on two of the big one like one Scottish summit and one of the expert live Europe last year yep yeah so I don't I don't use MVP as my target I just help try to help more people so whether it's just get them more learning about Azure itself and try to like the easiest way is to speak at user group. So that's what I do. And then I, whatever I learn from work, I try to share it with other people. Yep. Well, no, I think that's the you, spot on. It's like, you don't, it's, it, the goal is not to become an MVP. I mean, it might be in the back of your mind. You know, some people yeah. are, you know, they, they, they like I'm going down that path. I really want yeah. to, to focus on that. Um, but it, it it all needs to be based in you know things that you're doing for the community and yeah. regardless of the award i mean there's there's uh you know personally i get benefits from helping people i get that like runner's buzz of when i can answer a question or provide some help or guidance or point them to somebody else who knows the answer to a difficult question uh yeah it, it's I, I love helping people that way yeah, because I don't, it wasn't originally my target. My target is just to be better myself, like in soft skills, like, uh, like presentation skills, communication skills, and people skills and stuff, and then ending up really enjoying it. And then that's, that's well, why, it, that's how it started. So just trying to be more comfortable at presenting since at university, I was quite shy presenting at large crowds. So I tried to come out of my comfort zone. Yeah, that's because uh, I think that's uh, it, it's always when you think of like the, the people's biggest fears in life, public speaking is always in the top three. Yeah. Yeah. Sharks. I'm more afraid of <laughs> <laughs> becoming electrocuted somehow, you know, that I'm more fearful of that. So how did you like how did you approach that, that the first couple times of public speaking? What how did how did well, how did you get the nerves to do that? I. So I have like a role model. So some people in my community that's very good is like, for example, Thomas Mario, April Edwards, uh, some people that's very good. So they, I act like, I look at them as a role model. And then I try to, whenever I've got a session coming up, like speaking this session, I normally prepare it well in advance and then need to read to myself and make some notes and stuff and just do some dry run and then I just 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 don't whenever I'm on a day and standing up and presenting with people large people I don't think of them as a large crowd I think of them like the, you can teach them something and then that's it because if you teach it teach them see them like a large crowd it will scare you away so I just show them that I can teach them something so without being 
scared away by the yeah. noise crowd. I like that idea because I, my my method is just to think of it as an interaction, and yeah. and obviously sometimes you don't get that. You don't get questions. Uh, sometimes if you're in a large enough space, it might be dark. You may only see faces for the first few rows. <laughs> Um, but I, I always try to think of it as an interactive, like more of a conversation. Yeah, because some sometimes if there's a question that you don't understand, just don't be afraid to say no because no one's really expert in the cloud. So you can say you want to get you can get back to them and you help them, like contact me on social media, they'll try to help you and so. Have you ever had a heckler in the crowd? Sorry. Them to give you, you a hard time? You know, so uh, somebody somebody who disagreed and and argued yeah, tried to I argue with one, you. But then there's another one, another person in the crowd that helped to defend me, saying that yeah, it, that's how I done. I did the presentation before. That's not it works and stuff. Yeah, yeah. That's that's something that I I actually saw that happen to a few other speakers, and I just was I've been waiting for that that experience. And I mean, yeah. I've had people that have been very vocal, but I wouldn't call them hecklers. They weren't you know, being, being negative, trying to catch me in something or, nah. you know, but there's, there's I definitely people I, that try to talk about, like share their knowledge, like, Oh, I know more than yeah. you and kind of speak up. But again, it's just how you handle it. Yeah. That can be stressful, but it's not everyone's like that. So some people want to see you to see it. So end of the day, right. You can try your best. That's what I say. Well, that's what I don't mean to scare people that are thinking about this. Like it, 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 it really, it rarely happens. Yeah. It's like that. So people are usually pretty helpful and empathetic. Sometimes when people do that, like if someone people do, they want to test how much you know about some like a subject and stuff, they keep pushing you. So it's kind of good in terms of troubleshooting because they yeah. help you thinking. So so in terms of answering questions, just if you don't know something, just don't be afraid to say no. Or in the worst case scenario, a colleague could just or someone in the crowd could actually help you. So which yeah. it did. Yeah. Well, there was, uh, so I, I've shared a few times, but uh, so years and years ago, before I was doing much public speaking, uh, it was about just over 20 years ago, uh, came across one a, a gentleman who was speaking to technical communities. And he actually had his entire talk documented down the slides. And he had somebody, a friend of his sit in the audience and go through his slides in a, he had it in a, like a binder and was taking yeah. notes when the audience would react, when they wouldn't react, when questions that were asked. So he got real time feedback, you know, from the audience and how they re responded, but also little cues, things that this friend in the audience captured, like um, you did this, you couldn't really hear you. You didn't fill follow up with this point. Um, at this stage, or the the people ask these questions, maybe you need to build yeah. up the content around that and answer that question within the content. I just thought that was a fantastic idea. So that's again for somebody that's as you're starting out, that that's a good way to get feedback. Of course, you've yeah. got you got the tools like PowerPoint has the uh, yeah presentation the, coach the presentation coach as well. Because you don't really, I don't. You can normally make notes. Do you dry run your presentation coach? But at the end of the day, you just need to come out and go, come out your comfort zone and try to do it because at the end of the day, people want you to succeed and right. stuff. Definitely. Well, what what are your topics today? I, what lately? What what are you passionate about? What are you talking and speaking about? So my topics really some it varies really. Sometimes it should be Terraform. Sometimes it could be like. Open AI because that's that's buzz around Hot here. Topic, now. right? And then it could be like GitHub, and then it could be something like Azure DevOps. So most of the DevOps side. Yeah, yeah. Because normally how I do it is that when I submit a session, I normally put it as beginners, and then more I do those session that like if I do another Terraform one, I can put it into media because I know I did it before, so. I put it as introduction because it get feel that you know what level you are, the various. Yeah. So what what's your primary contribution type? Are you more of a writer? Do you do are you creating videos? Like what kind of content? So I do various. So I do like speaking at user group and then otherwise it would be like normal podcasts with other like people 
like me and you and stuff. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it would be like going and writing some troubleshooting stuff from my blog. So writing my blog. Yeah, and and when I have a chance, I just go to conferences. So that much. I didn't. I'm trying to get used to question and answer in Microsoft tech forums. <laughs> I'm trying to. Yeah. Get used to yeah. And that's <laughs> yeah. it. You know what I, I find with that? It, it, it's funny is, is that because I always encourage people. I said, if you're if you're deathly afraid of speaking, if you're not yeah. really good at writing, you're not you don't have a lot of time for that. I, I know uh, some MVPs that they started out by taking like 15, 20 minutes every morning going into like tech community and answering questions. Yeah. And, and when I've gone in there, I've attempted to do that. What I was finding was that a lot of them, most of them required follow-up questions. It was like too slow of a process. I, I you know, go um, in there and find things that I could answer like right you off. You can't really do that. You can answer one question, help we help troubleshoot something, but they might need further troubleshooting. Yeah. But well, that's, and that's, that's the thing. I know a, a lot of times, I mean, I've done the same thing. Ask a question because I'm just wary of going and sitting on the phone with support, waiting to talk yeah. to somebody and going through that process. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it, it's still, that that's something that I recommend. I actually started doing with a group of friends, um, early in the pandemic where we started doing, um, answering questions that were out in these various forums that were unanswered. And yeah. we started doing an AMA style and answering them with a group of us. Yeah. So AMA is quite good. So anything, you know, so it's kind of like, for example, if you go to Microsoft Docs, you just look, those could be like raising pull requests as well. So that yeah. could kind of contribution. Well, that's it. Yeah. And in, in fact, for folks that might not know that a lot of that, you know, documentation on Microsoft is community created content. Yeah. And so I, I, I always try to look for the authors of the content. If I'm looking in the SharePoint and Teams world, I usually know the people that are involved. Um, so it's always, you know, it's just one of those kind of, you know, silent contributions. It's not like you go and tweet out to the world, hey, I just added to document version 4.2.1 of this, you know, like, no, nobody does that. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it, it's it, it's cool to see people that you know out in the community contributing that way. Yeah, because you can see the author name. So it's most of them is community members and they're like that, it's like contributor. Yep. So what else do you have going on this spring? Or do you have a bunch of events lined up? So I I have one by community in the communities called I think they do it quarterly. It's called Agile Spring Clean. So every few months, a group of people organize that, and then we just do topic on some in Agile. It could be like cost management, security anything and then uh, i've got one in that's in march so yeah and then i submitted some one for to help to help one of the microsoft learner you know learner room microsoft learner room mm -hmm. uh zero to hero I, I, i'm trying to help a friend with that so it's what is it's pretty much like a learner room where people can go there to learn like from certificates so, and then every so often people bring speakers to mm -hmm. teach them Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'm I'm hopeful to some submit a section soon on Expert Live Europe, which is going to be on this September, this year September, and uh, I think I can't remember the place now. Yeah, so it should be good. Yeah, it's. Uh, I just saw a, a couple call the speakers are coming out. I, like I, I know that uh, I always recommend to people too is like start with your local user group. Like we. Yeah. We have our local user group meeting, I think next week. I don't even know. It's if it's on my calendar. So I know it's there. It's either the yeah. next week or week after. Anyway. Because um, I, I organize, a, I just founded my own user group as well. So oh, just. Yeah. What's that it, about? It's online. So it's pretty much, it's only Angio itself. And it just, it's, it's pretty much, oh, oh yeah, only solely on Angio. We just do it online at the moment. So. It's on my, I think, nine episodes so far now on Monday. Is so, that the uh, Azure Community Enthusiasts? Yes. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, see, yeah. I see. I I, I just went. I, and I'll put it yeah. in the blog and everything. But I, I'm looking at your MVP profile. So I was like, if it's not a link, you're talking about it. 
hopefully it's in the links it is yeah it's so. there yeah it's there and then i gave myself a kind of challenge to similar to yours by starting a new podcast called agile community insights so just speak to community members and bring their like uh bring what they know about like express uh, that topic so someone is a security so give more insights and share with other people so yep. and then hopefully i can put that like spotify and apple music i you know i so i tell people it's one of the uh i just i call it like a cheat sheet item for giving back to the community is yeah like like this like i'm not i mean i'm doing the production of it but yeah. i'm highlighting other people i'm highlighting yeah. their week their work it's right. i i love doing that and uh it, so it's a it's a fun way to contribute give back to the community so there's always the ability whatever area people are focused on to to just become like a you know a a you know a center of you know thought leadership around that that topic yeah. doesn't mean you're writing it you're creating all of that but bringing yeah. it and highlighting the work of others Again, yeah, that's why cheat, normally cheat. <laughs> one of my friend went to the MCT conference in Netherlands, uh -huh. and she said MCT it's a way to start MVP because you're like a you're a like trainer. a trainer. Yeah, yeah, you tell people about certain like product or stuff, and then it's similar and it's kind of one of your contribution to MVP as well. <laughs> so yeah, it's the same. Well, it's, yeah, I mean, because you're you're creating content, you're you're educating people. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's why I think you see a lot of MVPs that also are MCTs that because it just makes sense. They're, they're, it's the the same kind of experience. Not I'm not an MCT. Um, yeah. I'm actually it's it's one of the things on my list. I'm thinking about trying to get one this this year. Uh, and, and there's a couple different areas which I find that I'm talking about writing about constantly like why don't i just go and finalize it do the certification and then yeah. go for you, the you can just you can do this certification and then you can just do like a linkedin course linkedin right. learning course like whether it's foundation agile fundamental ar fundamental it's still a start because it's it's still a course and foundation knowledge yeah well that's again for folks that are interested in becoming an mct and a lot of the you know, the foundational, uh, the required, uh, you know, courseware, it's available out there through yeah. uh, LinkedIn learning and, and elsewhere. Um, and you can even take, you know, the the sample tests, and then you have to get to pay for a fee for the to sit for the actual certification exam. Um, but I, I believe everything else is free. Of course, there are classes, you could do it faster, uh, yeah. You could do the self-paced or you could go do a course and get that professional guidance, um, which, yeah, there's definitely benefits to that as well. Yeah, but I think it's better if you do it and then you start doing it as a job, like whether your job will be teaching people, like whether it's making content. So. Yep. Well, there's another, uh, again, it's I think it's great you bring it up because there are options for people out there that are saying, hey, well, you know, I, I'd be interested in becoming MVP. There's, and I, I have people, I run a, uh, uh, with a friend of mine, we run, uh, run a mentoring group for people that are interested in becoming MVPs. And we've had, we've been doing it for just over a year. That's Sharon Weaver and I have been running it for just over a year. And four of our people in our cohort have become MVPs since we started. Um, and, and there's certainly things that you can do um, to help make your contributions more visible um, to Microsoft, to the community, to the world. Uh, and But it starts with giving back to the community. Getting, I, I always recommend, like, start today. Go get involved with the years of group. Show up every month. Volunteer for things. And then, like as you did, just share, like, hey, I'd be happy to speak. And even if it's for, like, five, ten minutes at the begin of, beginning of a monthly because session now, you share what you're working like, on talk, like 15 minutes and then you can bring someone like people can bring myself or a fellow mvp to encourage you to right you as well like a like a solo no like a group speaker like co-speaker 
we started doing it where we ask anybody in the room, like, Hey, do you want to share? Like if you're working on something really cool at work and you want to share what you're building, or if you've got questions about that. And so sometimes people will like, Hey, I'm working on this and here was my approach and here's what I've done so far. And, and they actually get some consulting from people like, Hey, I've done, you should look at this or, you know, they get some help there, but it's also, you know, a, a, an experience of, you know, that first time of presenting to that user group. It's a great way to get started. Yeah. Because worst case now is someone can get started even at work doing presentation to other people, like a colleague and stuff like, like for example, my workplace, we do like a show and tell. So anything I learn, my team learn, we should share with other people. Yep. And that will help build your confidence to speak and a user group because you've done that session before we've shared with other members of your team. Yeah, that is great that you have your work culture that they're built around and support that. That's something that I've been in organizations that have done that. And it's always, it's benefited everybody you know, to, to do that kind of sharing. Uh, and it's also better to, uh, you know, highlight that, you know, one, you want to see as a, you know, as a people manager, you want to see that people are constantly learning new, new skills. They're developing yeah, because themselves and growing. At the end of the day, presentation skill is like soft skills. It's no matter where you go in your career, you will still need soft skills. Like right. if you go to management skill level, you still need that like, people skill, communication skill. You, I just use that as to increase it, <laughs> build yeah. my confidence. Uh, no, you will. I you will definitely get more opportunities if you develop those skills for sure. Yeah. So, well, Nicholas, really appreciate your time. Are are you coming to the MVP Summit? Yeah, I'll be in there in March, so I'm coming. Are you yeah. coming as well? Excellent. I will be there as well. So okay. we'll see what whether we can find each other in the crowd. But uh, yeah, if we see each other, we'll definitely have to say hello, take a picture. Yeah, I'll probably be there with a group of people like Greg Sutty, and then one of my one of my MVPs, like I think he got like 15 years MVP. I'm not sure if you know him. Uh, is Kevin Green? He's like a system center. <laughs> like it's it's a different area. See, that's yeah. that's the thing. It is it whether we'll even see so, each other depending on how they organize it. They there's different buildings. We may yeah. never cross paths during the week, but um, but yeah, I'll we'll, drop you a message on LinkedIn. If please do, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, you know, depending on how they do the layout, if we're all over on the main campus, because they've got the new yeah. building and everything over there, maybe we will see each other over there. So, yeah, sure. We'll definitely... we'll we'll put... the first one. <laughs> so I good. will, of course, I'm going to grab all your social links. Where are you most active in the social platforms? Where can people so, find you? People can find me through LinkedIn and Twitter. Yeah, those are my most. Okay. okay. Yeah. Well, we'll get everything else. We'll make sure we get your user group on there and your GitHub profile, everything else. If you want to find that, of course, it'll be out on the Buck the Planet blog, out on uh, YouTube as well as you'll be able to find links out on the podcast. So, Nicholas, really appreciate your time. Thanks for having me, Chris, man.